Let's also mention uh, compound options, which are options on options. Okay, if you're thinking about an option, well, it's just an asset price. Uh, it has a positive value before maturity, at least. And why not have an option to buy an option or an option to sell an option? So that's what a compound option is. For example, a call on a call is an option to buy a call option at some future time, let's say three months from now, for a call which expires six months from now. Okay. So that's what it is. Uh, well, in terms of computing its price, and this is how it would look like the, uh, the payoff. So suppose that the notation is capital T1 is this uh, three months from now. Uh, that's when we can, that's the maturity of the, of the option. That's where we can buy the, um, this call, the original underlying call, which expires six months from now. So uh, in principle, the price is in the Black Scholes model. The price at time zero expectation under the risk neutral probability discounted with three months. And here, what I write, this notation means it's the Black Scholes price at time t1 uh, for the option that expires at time t2. So this is the Black Scholes price at time three months from now for an option which expires six months from now. And this is its strike price. Okay. That's, uh, that's just a notation. So in terms of mathematical computation, you have here kind of a complicated nonlinear function, the Black-Scholes formula, and you will have to integrate that uh, relative to the uh, density of the stock price in the, in the Black-Scholes-Merton model. It actually can be done, uh, but once again, we are not really going to go through those computations. Well, not at all, uh, just to mention that it can be done. All right, let's do two more examples of options which we can actually compute the price of. The first one is a forward start option. Not that these two examples are something which is very popular, it's just that it's a nice uh, way to illustrate how the, again, how the uh, risk neutral pricing methodology works. So what is it? Here is the payoff written in mathematical terms, it's an option, call option, uh, on, a, on a stock, but with a strike price, which is not known today, the strike price is going to be the stock price itself at some future value T1, which is, uh, again, maybe three months from now, wh while capital T is maybe six months from now. Okay, so it's a call with a strike price as of T1, so the strike price is not known today, it's going to be known at T1. So I will have to compute something like this. Well, if you notice, I, I will actually first compute the price at time t1, three months from now. And then once I compute that price, which is going to be something like this, I'm going to price that value, which I know what it is three months from now, from the point of view at time zero. I can do that. This is the same logic as in the binomial tree. I go to six months from now, or, and then I go to the middle of the tree where I compute values three months from now, then I go, go back and compute the value today. So same thing here. I will first compute uh, the price at uh, the uh, intermediate time T1. For that, it turns out that it's useful to, to look at the following, uh, the following value, the value of S of zero, initial stock price, and then the ratio S of six months from now, capital T, over S of three months from now, T1. Okay, we, we had a, a formula in the Black-Scholes uh, model for the price of the stock under the P probability. Well, now I'm going to write it under the Q probability just by replacing um, W with WQ and uh, mu by R. Okay, so if you look back at those slides and that formula, this thing is going to be as zero is just rewritten here. The exponential function of sigma wq at capital T minus wq at small t1 plus r minus sigma squared over 2. It used to be mu here, now it's r times the difference in times t minus t1. Okay, that's just something we had before for this purpose here. And then now I'm going to try to compute this. 
Well, I'm going to factor out s sub t1 over s sub 0. That happens to be a useful thing to do. Okay. When I do that, here I have to divide by s of t1 and multiply by s of 0 so that they would cancel, right? and then I would go, go back to s of t, which I have here. Uh, on the other hand here, uh, s of t1 I factor out. Since I divided by s of 0, I have to multiply by s of 0, so I have, I have s of 0 here. Okay, this whole factor here is known at time t1, at which I'm taking the expectation, so it can go out. Actually, I don't want to take the discount factor out. I just want to take this guy out that's here. So I'm going to forget about this guy that goes out. It's known at time t1. Now the rest, look at the rest. It's discounting from t1 to capital T of uh, this thing here. It looks like a call option with strike price S of 0 on this. Now how does this look like? Well, that's exactly here. It looks like a stock which starts at S of 0 and then goes actually to capital T minus T1. Okay? And in fact, since I'm looking at the expectation starting at T1, this is going to have the same distribution as if I start at 0 with S of 0 and going up to capital T minus T1. All right? It's, it's the same distribution. Actually, you can use independence here, right? This guy is independent of this information, so you can replace here by, by zero expectation. And it, this is exactly the same distribution as, a st as the stock price in the Black Scholes Merton model, starting at S0 and the distribution of it at capital T minus T1. In other words, this here is the same, the expectation of the discounted term of this call payoff. It's going to be exactly equal to the price, the Black Scholes price, of an option with maturity capital T minus T1 and uh, starting at S of 0 and having a strike price S of 0. So in fact, S of 0 has two roles here. It's the initial, it's the stock price at which we are computing the Black Scholes formula and it's the strike price. Right? So if you want, it's an add the money option. Fine. So now I know what the price is at time t1, and I can compute the price at time 0 by discounting this payoff at time t1 and taking the expected value. Okay, this Black Scholes value is a number, it's not random because it depends on S of 0, which is known today. It doesn't depend on future stock prices, it depends on S of 0, so I can take it out. It's a number. And then I just have expectation under Q at time 0 of e to the minus rt1, s of t1 over s of 0. What is this? Well, I, can, I claim that this whole thing is just 1, so that I'm left with uh, this, this guy here. All right, why is that? Can you see that? Okay, so I claim this is 1. Well, this is the Martingale property. If you look at expectation Q, let's say 0, which we usually don't write, e to the minus r t1 s of t1. I know this product is a martingale, so its expectation is equal to the value in the past times 0, which is e to the minus r times 0 s of 0. But e to the minus r 0 is e to the 0, which is 1, so the whole thing is just s of 0. It says s of 0 cancels this s of 0, and there you go. This whole thing is just one. And it was just the Martingale property. Okay, so what I get finally is that the price of the forward start call option, which will have the strike price S of T1, is equal to the price of a call option with maturity capital T minus T1. The original maturity was capital T. And um, it's at the money option with a strike price S of 0, meaning that also uh, the stock starts at S of 0. That's how you compute this. This is just the Black Scholes formula for that call option. Okay, so it was an easy application of knowing how the stock price looks like 
in the black stress mo model, the, the above formula there. Also knowing that this distribution of this is the same as the distribution starting at S of zero and having my, um, going up to T minus T1, and then using the uh, martingale property here. Yeah, that's it, that's all we used. All right, so we now how we know now how to price a forward start call option. Let's do one more example. A chooser option. A chooser option is an option you buy it and then you decide later whether your payoff is going to be call or put. Okay? A, a call or a put payoff. Say you buy today and then three months from today you decide whether six months from now you will have an option to buy or option to sell, a call or a put. Again, I denote by T1 the time when the holder, the buyer, can decide whether the payoff will be a call or a put. Let's say the same strike price and the same maturity. Okay, here actually, I don't need the black choice model. We could have done this before. This, is, this just comes from put call parity. That's all I'm going to use. And again, I'm going to compute the price at time T1, the three months from now price, and then I will see what, what the price is at any time. So the price at T1 is going to be this. It's going to be the maximum, the bigger of the call price and the put price at that time. Okay? I'm going to come to time T1 three months from now. I'm going to compute, if I believe in the black Scholes model, I'm going to compute the black Scholes prices at that time compare and I'll just decide okay it's going to be the call because the call has a higher value if C of T1 is bigger than P of T1 otherwise I'm going to decide okay it's going to be a put because P of T1 is bigger than C of T1. Fine but now I'm going to use put call parity which says that P of T1 is C of T1 plus something plus this difference discount is the strike price from T1 to capital T minus S of T1, the stock price at time three months from now. So now I have a maximum of C of T1 and C of T1 plus this difference. Well, that's either going to be C of T1 if this difference is negative or it's going to be C of T1 plus the difference if the difference is positive. That's going to be the maximum. Okay, so we can write it as C of T1 plus maximum of zero and this difference. Fine. So this, this is just the price of a call. And this I recognize as a put option, as a payoff of a put option with some particular strike price k times e to the minus r capital T minus lowercase t1. Fine, it's a strange strike price, it's just a number, it's a strike price on it's the right to sell the stock at time t1 so the maturity is lowercase t1 it's the put option on the same underlying but with maturity t1 and with this strike price therefore i know what the value should be at any time also before t1 it's a it's a price at any time the price is the sum of a price of the price of a call option with maturity capital t the original call option and the original strike price k and also the plus the price of, of a put option with maturity t1 and this particular strike price All right. so it was uh, it was not hard just using put call parity to price to price this chooser option and that's it for this set of slides See you or see me in the next set of slides. Thanks.